Large complex NetCDF datasets can be challenging for two reasons. First, they can be complex. They contain many different variables corresponding to physical attributes like temperature or pressure. All those variables are, are correlated with coordinates like latitude and longitude, and all of those need to be manipulated in concert. And that can be challenging with using abstractions like task array or NumPy. Secondly, the second challenge, that there are often many of these files. So here we have 100 NetCDF files corresponding to simulation uh, that's uh, both sizable in, uh, in data. Each of these files are uh, about 14 gigabytes large, but also in terms of complexity. It is difficult to manage all of these files, all of these variables within each file in a sensible way. You're using lots of for loops with NumPy arrays. This is where the library X-Array comes in. So X-Array gives us a tool that has nice, uh, gives us a nice computational framework <coughs> over the NetCDF data model. So in these couple lines of code, I've read in not all of my data, but just 10 of my pieces of data. And I've read in not the data itself, but the metadata corresponding to it. So this X-Array data set now corresponds to 10 of those NetCDF files, all of variables therein. And we've told it how to concatenate those, those files and how to chunk them up in time. So using X-Array now, so this data set is still sizable, it's 450 gig gigabytes total. Using X-Array, we can describe a fairly complex computations with a few lines of code. So here, we're looking at one variable in that data set, we're taking the average over time, and then for that average, we're now going to computer, compute the the maximum and minimum values by ensemble member. So this is a variety of simulations, and each simulation you know, started with slightly different inputs and came up with different outputs, and we're looking at that variance to, to estimate uncertainty. So this spread object is another X-ray object. Uh, it has coordinates of latitude and longitude, so it's a spread for every point in space. And we haven't computed anything yet. We could, so X-ray uses Dask, and Dask will chunk up those arrays and compute them in parallel. We haven't connected to a cluster yet. By default, Dask will use a local thread pool. This will be fairly slow because it's a large data set in a single machine, but it will operate, it will uh, complete because complete, Dask will try to avoid putting all the data in memory at once. However, we don't have all day, so we're going to connect to a cluster, the same cluster we had before, and we're going to go ahead and compute that. So as before, we're seeing on the left all of our workers and what they're working on over time. So the teal is uh, loading data, reading data from, from disk. The uh, yellow and green here are actually doing some computations. See that we're spending most of our time just reading from the network file system. This will take about 20-ish seconds as all of our workers can finish up. Now we can get a nice, a nice plot out of this. And we can see that you know, over sort of the, the mountainous regions, our simulation tends to be a little bit more uncertain. There's a little more unpredictability there. So again, this is a, a scientific result that we're able to do on a large data set uh, relatively easily. This is more or less accessible to, uh, to many atmospheric scientists out there. So there's X-ray for the complexity, DASK for the computation, Jupiter for the nice visualization. Uh, it's all working together in a, in a system to give us nice distributed computing on real scientific problems.